معرفة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now let's discuss about the second prerequisite which was about contracting parties. So if we are taking the same example, so these are two parties and one party is wishing to sell its real estate assets to the other party. So what is the important point with respect to the contracting parties is that both these parties should have the legal capacity. What do we mean by a legal capacity? Okay, we mean by legal capacity that these parties should be for example or they must attain three things one is puberty the other is maturity right and they both must be sane so these are three important points generally which is considered when we say that the parties should have legal capacity to enter into a contract uh, puberty of course is that a person needs to be physically mature to enter into a contract uh, maturity here generally refers to uh, according to jurist maturity means good and proper dealing with wealth from a worldly point of view and sane is of course that the mental capacity of the person has to be normal okay for that person to enter into a legal contract okay let's take the same example example so there are two parties okay and these and one party wants to sell its real estate to the other part so what is the subject matter here the subject matter now we need to understand that in a contract the subject matter could either be a tangible asset it could be a usufra or it could be services so let us first understand a tangible asset so this these buildings are tangible so these are tangible assets so if this seller wants to sell its real estate to a purchaser then the subject matter here is a tangible asset and it is it has to be sharia compliant meaning to say that this in itself needs to be sharia compliant a non-compliant asset cannot be a subject matter of a sharia compliant contract so th these buildings are for example sharia compliant so therefore the seller is selling its compliant assets to the purchaser now this addresses the tangible assets for example in case of usufruct so the subject matter could be three one is the tangible asset so we have understood that these are the tangible assets so if the seller wants to sell its real estate to the purchaser then these tangible assets could be sold and these tangible assets are also sharia compliant in the second case for example in terms of usufruct okay in terms of the usufruct now if this party wants to lease these buildings to party b so what it means is that as we know in sharia a lease is sale of a usufruct so the benefit of these buildings for example the party a is selling to party b meaning to say that this party b can use this building for a year and give the rentals to party b so this party b can use these buildings for a year and give the rentals to party a so this is a rental contract now so here the subject matter is the usufruct now the subject matter we said could also be work so for example there was some damage in the building okay and because there was a damage the owner of these buildings had appointed certain workers okay or certain contractors to rectify the damage so in that scenario the contract between these two entities here will be that of work or a service and the contract will would say that the workers would rectify the damage and for that rectification the owner of the assets would pay money to the contractors so as we have discussed the subject matter of the contract could be the first important point is that in the subject matter is that the subject matter has to be sharia compliant and then in terms of the nature of the subject matter that it could be tangible it could be usufruct or it could be work and we have seen examples for each one of them 